Welcome everyone, Mistaken Silence here, bringing you another Star Trek Fleet Command in-game tutorial. I am super excited about today's show because, well, it's the second one we've done, which means the first one had enough attention to at least warrant trying a second one. So thank you so much to all of you who liked the video, who sent me comments on Discord, or in game, or even made a comment here on the video. If you haven't done so already, I'm gonna go ahead and say it up front because that's what everyone else does. Go ahead and like the video, hit that little like button, and then also hit the subscribe button so that way you know exactly when new videos come out. So, today, let me go ahead and tell you about today's video. Five things, five tips, five tricks, five little tidbits of information on how to make you a better player that's important, or how to make the game a slightly a bit easier for you and a little less time consuming, that's also important, and really just to how to make it an all around better experience. So in order to prepare for today's video, I went to my alliance, which is Phoenix Alliance on server 34. Shout out to you all. Thank you so much for helping me prepare for today's video. So I, I asked them, what are some things that you wish you, had done differently that maybe would have helped prepare you or at least saved you some time while leveling through all of those levels. Also a special shout out to Scarlet Fire um, from Server 34 as well who helped me kind of go through the list, narrow it down and pick out what we thought would be some of the most important things to touch on. For number one, let's start with something that's going to save you time. Now, I realize that some of you players who've been doing this for a while may already know this, and, and maybe this video is not going to be for you, or at least this segment's not going to be for you. Um, this is going to be the minor automatic swap. Some of you may know exactly what that is, but then there may be some of you who are sitting there saying, what in the world is this guy talking about? So if you take a look at the example I have here, you'll notice I already have a mining ship sitting on a node in Lakeside. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my mining ship that's already there, I'm going to move it away from the node. I'm going to go ahead and select another ship, send it, go ahead and tell it to start mining. It's going to warp out. And here you go. You're going to watch my original ship move back to the mining node. It's going to continue to mine until that second ship gets there. I should note that the second ship I sent in this example was truly recorded just for this example. So, you're probably not going to see me using Pike and Moreau on a mining ship um, just for just for reference. So all of you sitting there cringing for the fact I just sent Pike and Moreau to go mine. It's okay. Calm down. Take a deep breath. It's, it's purely for an example of, of how the mechanics work. So the rest of you may be wondering, why in the world? Am I, why do I want to do this? What benefit? do I get from doing this? Well, let's assume that you know that you're going to be going over your protected limits very soon and you have to go into work or you have to go into school. Or you've got to sit down for dinner. Uh, something is going to pull you away and you know that during that particular amount of time, you are going to go over your protected limit. Well, this is the perfect example of how to save time. You're not going to sit there and wait and wait and wait because you know it's a seven minute flight to this place or it's a eight minute flight here. You can go ahead, move the ship away like I showed you, send that second ship and then move your first ship back to that node. And let me show you what happens once that second ship arrives into the system and tries to start mining. So you'll see here the second ship is on its way in it's moving towards the mining node. Uh, your original ship, it's still sitting there mining. And we're slowly moving towards the mining node. And as that second ship arrives, it will actually take over the mining on that node. So again, this is a perfect way to save a little bit of time. You know you're going to be in a meeting for 30 minutes, but you really don't want to be hit for that protected cargo that's, you know, the over your limit. This is a perfect example of how to go ahead and continue to play the game without actually having to be in the game. Now, that was tip number one. So I hope that helped you. If you have any questions with that, please feel free to reach out to me. But as far as tips goes, that's a rather easy one and something that can actually be truly valuable to you. 
Tip number two. I've already told you how to save time. Let's go ahead and talk about how to actually save some cost inside the game. If you've never done so, take a look at your dry docks. Uh, let's go and say you want to upgrade one of them. If you take a look, whenever you go to upgrade, you will notice that by doing so, you are actually increasing the percentage of your repair speed bonus, as well as increasing the percentage of the repair cost efficiency. So what that means is you need to put your most expensive ship to repair on your highest level dock because that's what's going to give you the best discount. To give you an example, we're going to use the Kamari from last week's show. So if we look here, I'm going to go ahead and have the Kamari on dry dock D. Now this particular dry dock is actually at level 42, which is the level I'm at. So it's maxed for my level. So the cost for the full repair of the Kamari on dry dock D is going to be approximately 96,200 Tritanium and 12,500 Dilithium. Now let's go ahead and take a look at Dry Dock E. Now my Dry Dock E is actually level 41, so it's one level below, so it's not going to be a drastic difference, but any little amount you can save in this game is going to be beneficial long term. So Dry Dock E a full repair of that Kamari is going to be 97,500 Tritanium and 12,700 Dilithium. Again, not a huge difference. But whenever you get up to your higher level ships, your, your Epic G G3 ships, your G4 ships, definitely, you're going to see that difference. And long term, any way you can save resources in this game, you need to do so. As someone who's sitting at level 42, or whether I was sitting at level 37 or 35 or even 30, I'm going to tell you the game gets more expensive as you move forward. So any way you can save, do so. This next one I am super excited about because I am extremely passionate when it comes to officers. I wasn't. When I was in my early 20s, when I was leveling up, I was not. I, I really knew very little about officers, and I talked about that in the last episode. But around 28 to maybe level 30, I had a conversation with a server member, Darius Rex, who walked me through why I needed to be passionate about officers. And one of the things that I learned was about transporter patterns. It's something you'll you'll learn probably in your, your early to mid-30s, um, but you're never going to get there if you don't start leveling and working towards ranking up those officers that you have currently and unlocking ones that you don't have yet. So we all know that in the game, they're going to give recruit tokens and things like that. But something you can actually do, let's say you saved up a little bit of latinum. Something you can do is you can go to the officer tab. Head on over to the recruit part, click on that green button there. And if you scroll over, you'll find the standard recruit. Now, standard recruit, that's going to give you your green officers, uh, your mining officers. You actually have the option to use Latinum to purchase these. These are the only, only officers that are available. This is the only ones that allow you to use Latinum to purchase their shards. So, if we look here, you'll see that... The first chest is going to give you 20 recruit tokens. So basically one chest for 80 latinum. If you want to do a three chest pull, you're going to be looking at 240 latinum. And for a five chest pull, you're looking at 400 latinum. Now, again, it may not be something you can afford, but if you can, this is a great way to start earning those shards. Because the sooner you can start leveling up those officers, the easier the game is going to be for you. I can tell you from firsthand experience that you can have two exactly power level ships. They can be the same exact strength, the same tier, everything the same about them, but one can be crewed with amazing officers and the other one can be sitting there with officers that just really haven't been worked on. And the one with the amazing officers is going to win every single time. So 
if you have the latinum, this is a great way for you to start earning those shards to help you start working and unlocking new officers and maxing the ones you have. Let's move on to tip number four. Now, tip number four is, you know, maybe a little bit deeper than you may think you need to be. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you, the sooner you get organized and the sooner you know what it is exactly you need to upgrade this or to upgrade that, the better you're going to be your game and the less stress and actually the least amount of real cash you're going to drop in the game because you're able to actually look and say, hey, this is what I'm working towards and this is how I'm going to get there. I didn't do this till, I'm going to say probably about five levels ago, but I started what I call as a ship upgrade requirement. It's just a, a Google spreadsheet that I did um, if we take a look here, this is my auger that I'm currently working on. I'm trying to get to tier seven. I need one, one more component upgrade, um, and I'm not that far from it. But if we take a look, you can see I've got it set out that for G3 Uncommon Ore, I need 8,877, um, you know, and we move on down the line. And at the bottom, we add that up, and then we can actually take a look exactly what I need to get to tier seven. We'll move on over. We'll take a look at my Enterprise. Um, I actually just maxed out my Enterprise uh, during an auction, so I'm really excited about that. It's fully maxed. You know, don't freak out. You'll get there. It'll happen. Don't worry. You're good. And if it doesn't, it's okay. It's all about the game you play. So we'll take a look at, like, for instance, here, my Jelly. Um, I says Jellyfish. In order to get a Tier 7, I need all of these components to be upgraded. But this right here tells me exactly what I'm going to need to make it to the next tier. So I'm going to go ahead and put a link to this on the YouTube channel. That way you can download it and you can put it in your ships, um, you know, whatever it is you want to put into there. But you can make up your own. It's entirely up to you. But this is something that will be available to you if you would like. So for the last, last tip, this actually is one that Scarlett and I talked about probably one of the most important tips of the entire game, whether you are a level one or level 50, just ask questions. Just ask people, talk to them. If you're in an armada with someone and you see that you keep dying and your teammate over here doesn't, take a look at their crew. Ask them, what, why is it you're not dying? You know, we have the same ship. What are you doing differently? Let's take a look. Why is that particular officer working and what I have not? If you're grinding hostiles and you see that you have to keep repairing and coming back, but this guy over here in the corner is, you know, he's, they've been going for a good 30 minutes and they only have half their health gone. Maybe take a look, scan their ship, see what crew they have, or I know it's going to be crazy, but just reach out to them and ask. Asking questions paying attention, taking notes, and just doing what you can to learn is what's going to make you a better player. There'll be stressful times. There'll be times where you don't have what you need to upgrade your ship or, you know, this person keeps hitting your miner and, you know, whatever. Those times are still going to be there. But if you've done everything you can on your end, it's going to pay off in the long run. So remember, ask questions. Don't be afraid to communicate. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Can't say that enough. We'll say it one more time. Communicate with your team, with your other server members and people through the content creators, discords, you know, reach out to your content creators. Just ask questions. Watch shows Watch other content creators' episodes. Check out what information they have. Because that's how you're truly going to learn. And it's what's going to make you a better player. And ultimately, being a better player is going to help you enjoy this game more. So, I hope those were helpful. If there's something that you think we missed, I would love to hear about it. Uh, feel free to shoot me a message through Discord. You'll be seeing our Discord server coming up soon. I'm excited about that. Um, you can also subscribe to an email list. I'm working on that as well. 
So some exciting things coming. Thank you so much again. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you hadn't. And tell all of your friends. And like me, look forward to the next episode. Thank you so much. Last but not least, remember to always shill. Because like I said before, and like they say in the game, shield or share.